I'll switch to German again. Als nächster Punkt der Tagesordnung folgt nun der Bericht von Frau Fotiger, strategische Kommunikation der EU, um gegen sie gerichtete Propaganda von Dritten, um gegen sie gerichteter Propaganda von Dritten entgegenzuwirken. Die erste Rednerin ist die Berichterstatterin Frau Fotiger für vier Minuten. Thank you, Madam President, Madam President, uh, High Representative. Uh, uh, it is my pleasure and privilege to present the report on the EU strategic communication to counteract the propaganda against it by third uh, parties. I, I consider it uh, a matter of utmost importance that uh, the European Parliament expresses its stance on so issues so pertinent and, and timely. Allow me first to strike a very uh, personal note because uh, this issue is also important for me personally. Uh, actually, my whole public life, a large part of the, this, uh, after under communist rule and and uh, after was dedicated to to countering the narrative exerted by first Soviet Union and then the Russian Federation of its special traditional sphere of influence. I consider it always uh, uh, very dangerous for our. Uh, joint sovereignty, because the same issue refers to many nations of Central and Eastern Europe. I'm, so I'm very privileged to pre present it uh, here today before the European Parliament. I must say that I have also very personal experience uh, in seeing with my, observing with my own eyes, the race of radical Islamism throughout years. It was uh, very important for me to, to, to monitor elections in Lebanon in 2005 after assassination and of Rafik Hariri and seeing the, the influence of, of Stratcom at that time. Of course, we've seen in be, uh, uh, until now, many transformations of, of strategic communications and propaganda of, of these countries. The uh, assignment from the enlarged bureau of uh, uh, AFET was very clear. I was given the task to describe the uh, propaganda the, the, the hostile propaganda of both state and non-state actor. And it was decided that I present in my report, together with my co-workers and experts, and after consideration and joint elaboration with excellent shadow reporters of uh, political groups, uh, the view of uh, uh, two, two uh, directions that we have to face the, the hostile propaganda from. Um, in terms of Russian Federation, um, the situation is uh, somehow uh, clear now because after the, the annexation of Crimea and aggression of Russian Federation in the eastern part of uh, Ukraine, uh, many countries of, of Western world, Western democracies are fully aware of, of uh, uh, proceedings of uh, disinformation, of, of uh, manipulation, propaganda. I'm sorry, you have to stop. Thank you. Danke. Uh, nun ist das Wort bei, erneut für die Kommission bei 
the Hon Representante Federica Mogherini. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, last week, uh, the Oxford Dictionary has named post-truth the word of the year 2016. Post-truth describes a situation, I quote from the dictionary, where objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion and personal belief. And this phenomenon has always existed, for sure, but it has become even more relevant in the age of internet. We know that the quality of the information is not always what makes a content viral. Social media and search engines tend to promote contents that confirm the user's views instead of challenging them. And we all understand how relevant this can be in political terms, including for our European Union. So I'm glad that the report we discussed today has given this Parliament the opportunity to reflect on such a delicate and crucial issue where security has to be taken into account, but also everyone's freedom of expression. As the report states, exposing this information is an important task, and I'm glad that the report commends the work carried out by our East Stratcom Task Force. It is clear from the task force work that the challenge coming from this information is not receding. And let me thank the Parliament for its close interest and support for the work we're doing with the task force over the past year, and also the member states who have contributed to the team. I can only welcome the proposal that this Parliament has advanced to strengthen both our East and South Task Force on Strategic Communication. As I mentioned, both of them, Stratcom East and South, uh, let me stress that our work on this information is very different and depends on case-by-case case, uh, scenario. This information can be contrasted with fact-checking and rational arguments. The propaganda of terrorist groups like Daesh needs instead to be confronted first and foremost by taking down the illegal contents from the internet. To address the issue of the accessibility of terrorist materials, the Commission established an, inter an internet referral unit at Europol that actively scans for terrorist content online and refers it to the internet companies. So far, still we are in initial phase. We have referred over 15,000 pages and in 90% of cases, the material has been removed. Yet we know that this part of our work, however crucial, cannot be enough. What matters even more is to explain what the European Union is doing, how it is making a real and positive difference to the lives of so many people inside and outside the European Union. Now, the report issues, um, tackles with the issue of propaganda by third parties, but let me say that this is an issue that would be interesting to see also inside the European Union, starting maybe from this very same hemicycle. We need to give voice to the people who have benefited from our policy, amplify the positive stories, simplify the messages, talk about real life. The truth, the truth both to the East uh, and to the South and inside our Union, uh, is that uh, this positive, this added value of the European Union has to be more visible. And this is why we have put public diplomacy among the key areas of implementation of our global strategy. So the East Stratcom Task Force is doing this, providing expert guidance to our delegations, working closely with governments, in the Eastern Partnership 